It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi, everybody. It's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne. And welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. We're live here today in studio. And of course, our friends and fans on Facebook, Twitter, thewineladies.com. Thanks, as always, for sending in all your questions and your comments. And also, I would like to say this would be a great time to remind everybody that we have a contest going on right now. If you don't already like us on our Wine Ladies Facebook fan page, now would be a great time to do that because we are giving away a prize, a $25 gift certificate to the Wine Ladies Accessory Store just for liking us. As easy as that. And we've got some fantastic items in our store. We've got some Brick's chocolate. We've got ice bags that, um, that, that are like wine coolers. We've got a whole array of things. We're going to be picking the winner on November the 20th, uh, 2011. So make sure you like us on our Facebook fan page. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we've got a great show planned for everybody here today. We're going to be uh, talking about a winery that is over 120 years old and is legendary mm. for more than one reason. Now, you know the, the old saying, uh, the devil is in the details? <laughs> well, in this specific <laughs> case, say. the devil resides elsewhere. Oh, that really does sound intriguing. <laughs> All right, like as we always like to do, we like to toast our guest in studio and of course toast the Wine Lady Show. So here we have our oversized glasses. Cheers, everybody, to a fantastic show. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. And in our glasses, we have a delightful 2010 Sauvignon Blanc. It is from Chile, and we're going to learn a lot more about this wine and many others a little later in the show. All right, so on to our guest this afternoon. He has been described as a winemaker genius, as well as being one of the most likable winemakers in the industry. We've already spoken with him, and I have to agree. And uh, he has crafted wines that have become Chile's first global wine, uh, with sales topping over 2 million cases. Let's welcome to the show Marcello Papa, winemaker for Concha y Atora. Oh, I can never say it. <laughs> Casilero del Diablo. Good. Uh, that oh, was okay? Right. Uh, I, I think maybe I get a 4 out of 10 on that one. But <laughs> Welcome, right. Marcelo. Thank you. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Suzanne. And you're uh, just here from Chile. You just arrived from Toronto I for just six arrived. hours you've been here. Yes. I just arrived to Toronto, and uh, I enjoyed this beautiful day. And, and your you must company, have brought of the course. sunshine with you. Of course, of course. <laughs> we thank you for that. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. You're and you welcome. just ran a half marathon yesterday. You, you ran yeah. a half marathon, you hopped on the plane, and you, you came over to see us here in Toronto. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, it, it's life. It's life. You need to, if you want to do wines, food, and everything, you need to do a little bit of a sport to put more in equilibrium your life. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, that's true. And your wine, the Casalera del Diablo, Hey, Over. you said that way better than I did. Uh, I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I was practicing in the closet. No, but this, this first of all, what does, what does that mean? We were uh, well, Casier is a very old brand in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, started in the mid-60s uh -huh. and means uh, the, de the devil's cellar. Ah, devil's hence the opening cellar. about the devil. So right. there's a story behind that, behind the legend. Maybe you can share it with us. Yeah, well, it's a very... Uh, old story, legendary story, mm -hmm. that um, Don Melchor de Casa Concha, yes. which is the founder of the company, mm -hmm. uh, imagine Chile 130 or 120 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, no, no electricity, dark underground cellars. Uh, this guy got some bottles, good bottles, and, and, and aged uh, yes. for some time, mm -hmm. and some workers came. Uh, steal the bottles, they the good the bottles, wine. they took the wines, mm -hmm. and uh, so they, they doesn't know how to stop that. Uh -huh. So he create or he invent a and he store. spread uh -huh. the rumor that the devil lives on that cellar. It was the first uh -huh. viral story <laughs> 150 yes, right. years ago. Uh -huh. So imagine the people very superstitious believe it and well. Yeah. And the wine was safe after all. Yes, it was very <laughs> safe. Huh? That's a good story. Yeah. And this is an unbelievable brand. I mean, over two million cases a year? Yeah. That? Wow, yeah. that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's a brand that, uh, as, as I told you before, we started in the mid-60s mm -hmm. with Cabernet. Yes. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Then in the 90s, we included other varieties like uh, uh, Merlot, Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet. Well, we started with Cabernet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we included the rest of the varieties, and today we are running a little bit more than 10 different varieties. Wow. And we are over 135 countries. And how Amazing. you are the chief winemaker, but how many other people do you have on your team to help make all this uh, happen? Well, Conchito is a big company, but the uh, in Casillero team, uh, I'm the chief, the, ch the chief winemaker, uh -huh. and I have two, three other uh, winemakers that work direct with me, okay. and uh, we work together. So I can do all the work. I need to run also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to run. Well, I know you do a lot of running. One of the things that we found out was, first of all, that, that the grapes are sourced from all over Chile, like 600 kilometers yeah. length, where all the grapes come from to make, to make these wines. And yeah. you do a lot of traveling and go check out the different vineyards and yeah, in, the year. Right. Uh, I live uh, in the heart of, San, of uh, Maipo area, mm -hmm. which is very close to Santiago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very good location for me because I'm in the Maipo region where we get a lot of uh, group. So 30, 40 minutes driving from my house. So you can uh, stay home. I you don't could have say, to. Yes. It's a day trip. Right. And then uh, uh, Rapel, which is another important area. I'm a uh, one hour driving, one hour and 20 minutes. Okay. So Not again, so bad. and Casablanca, which is a coastal area mm -hmm. close to Valparaiso and Viña del Mar, uh, beach cities. Yes, yeah. I'm an uh, hour and 30 minutes. So that is okay. the good part. Yes. And the bad part, but good part also, is Limari area, which is in the north, mm -hmm. uh, 450 kilometers. But uh, usually I, I fly or I, I drive and I go one day and I stay one night there. Oh, so what okay, do you look okay. for when you're, you're sourcing these grapes? What's the magic in the grapes that you're looking for? Well, I think that 90% of your work is on that, selecting grapes. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest that you could do in the cellar is just to do, you, you need to do correct while making, don't do mistakes, and that's it. And I don't uh, know. I had one experience making wine at home. I just wanted to try <laughs> to see what it was like. <laughs> it was a complete disaster. All right, all right. I, I'm going to leave the wine making to, you, to the experts, most right. definitely. <laughs> yeah, I still have one of those bottles, by the way. It looks a little bit like uh, vinegar. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it had a great label, though. It did. It had a great label. It had the wine exactly. ladies on it. Yeah. Well, it sounds so good. Now, the, I, also, I also read somewhere that you were saying, and you have to imagine this, I guess, I don't think people would maybe necessarily think this way, that um, you say that it is much more difficult, more challenging to make two million cases of one wine than maybe just 500 cases of one wine. I think so. I think so. I think that the, when the, you do tiny amount of, of wines that uh, you, you could select very good the origin, the uh -huh. terroir, one single vineyard, that it will deliver top quality. Yeah. Right. So you, again, you don't, you don't need to do a big mistake in the cellar. You just vinify correct, and you try to express as best what that vineyard uh, gives. Right. Uh, in the case of Casillero, that uh, are blends, big blends, as this, this Sauvignon Blanc is a blend of uh, maybe 30 different vineyards That's of amazing. Uh, Casablanca, Limari, Rappel area. Wow. So uh, the work is much harder. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, to in order to get a, a good quality uh, wine. So yeah. I have a question, is it more a, the science of doing that or more the art of doing that? What would you say? Uh, uh, the science, it's when you select the grapes. Mm -hmm. So it is based on science? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, because the, the, uh, if, you, if you need or if you want or you are, if you are looking for quality, you need to select pretty good the grapes mm -hmm. and you, you think that that, that grapes uh, it will deliver good quality. Uh -huh. Them in the cellar is a little bit more a uh, logistic issue to do a correct vinification, racks, uh, bottling, that kind right. of things that are more easy. More technical, yeah, more, more, technical, more, more standardized, yeah. more easy. Uh -huh. But uh, so it's selecting not so the grapes. It's more gray areas yeah. out in the vineyard, but black and white more in, in, right. the, in but the winery. Selecting the grapes, you change the flavors. The color, the structure, the aromas, the feeling, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is the key. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what is the flavor profile 
that the Sauvignon Blanc has? Like year after year, you have a consistent profile. Yeah. What What do you look for? What do you hope to achieve? And what do you achieve in this in this amazing yeah. wine? Well, I think that the Sauvignon Blanc is a variety that they, um, it's a crisp it's a crispy variety. Uh -huh. It's one of my good favorites. I love good. Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, good, very mm -hmm. good for oysters mm -hmm. and seafood. Uh, so I always look for good acidity, mm -hmm. gooseberry character, yes. some green character, but not too much. Okay. Just uh, that gives some freshness, mm -hmm. and that's it. A medium structure, Sauvignon Blanc is not a full body wine. It's right. a medium, light. Easy uh, to drink. Mm -hmm. Easy mm -hmm. to drink. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, in the country, um, in the past 10 years ago, we, are, we was uh, located in, air, in warmer areas uh -huh. as we are today. Today, okay. everybody's planting in the country, companies and growers uh, close to the coast. Uh -huh. So we are moving the appellation of this wine through the years. Uh -huh. right. And we will okay. continue to do uh, that in order to increase the quality. And the same with every single variety. Mm -hmm. When start, starting to appear new areas that you believe that uh, that area is better for, it's it. better for right. you start to lose uh, uh -huh. the other grapes and yes. you start to move and push that people plant more on those areas. So where is Sauvignon Blanc mostly planted now in Chile? Today we are running in uh, roughly 50 percent in the Casablanca region mm -hmm. which is if you know Santiago or Chile yeah. from Santiago the capital it's about uh, 60 kilometers from the coast okay. to the coast mm -hmm. uh, about it's a tiny area located 20-25 kilometers from the coast okay. mainly from this area and then other two coastal areas in Rapel and Limari, that is slightly south, slightly north, but okay. coastal. Uh -huh. Here okay. the main uh, uh, issue is that all vineyards are located 20, 25 kilometers from the coast. Okay, does that help you give the acidity, the good Christmas and the acidity in yes. the wine? Right. Yes, mm -hmm. because remember that uh, Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. as in Vancouver for example, yes. uh, Pacific Ocean is very cool. Yeah. So if every single kilometer that you move close to the coast, mm -hmm. you get cooler and cooler right. uh, f uh, conditions, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So for Sauvignon Blanc, you need that, not for Cabernet. Well, Cabernet, yeah, we, exactly. we look more sun, yes. uh, warm, not for Sauvignon Blanc. I think we should try the Sauvignon Blanc, actually. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to have a little sample of well, that. Well, I think we should go to a break first. Oh, let's go to a break. Okay. <laughs> and when we get back, All we'll right. open, open it up and give it a try. Sounds good. Hey, Georgia, hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen, so what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny, the Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out Wines, hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. In Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. 